In this feature tutorial, we're going to go over using page headers. We're going to talk about everything that they are and all the different ways that you can use them. First, we need to just answer the question, though, what is a page header? Now, there's three distinct properties of a page header. First, it's the area under the main header. The main header is where you're going to have your logo and your navigation menu and other items. So it's that area just under that main header area. Next, it has a background color or an image. I'll be showing you how you can set either of those. And lastly, it contains the title of the page or post, and it optionally can show other info. For example, if it's on a blog post, you can choose to include other information such as the author, the published date, etc. You have access to all of these options options. So let's take a look at the types of page headers. There's a page headers for your entire website, and this is going to be set inside of the customizer. I'm going to show you that here in a moment. Now you set this up individually for different types of content on your website. For example, pages that you create would be one page header and blog posts would have an entirely different set of options and other types of content you might have on your website. It's very easy to set up. Now, there's also individual page header options. So if you set them up globally and there might be a post or a page where you don't want to show the page header, there's individual options and I'll show you that as well. And lastly, the WooCommerce shop page is different in how it's set because there is not really a shop page for those options. So I'm going to show you where that's set as well inside of the customizer. So here I am. I have a page that I've created and the name of the page is page headers and I don't have page headers enabled at all on my website. So let's first take a look at how to add those to my website inside of the customizer. So I'm going to navigate here to where it says customize. And since I'm going to be doing this for pages, it's going to be found under page layout. If I was creating it for blog posts, that would be here under blog posts. So let's take a look at page layout. So I'll click here and you can see the feature is disabled right here. It says page title and the toggle is off. So if I toggle it on, now that feature is going to be enabled. And you can see right here is the title of the page and there's a default image selected for the back. Now let's customize this a little bit. So first we have the options of alignment right here. So it says page title alignment. If I wanted it to the left, center or right, those are options. I also have the options for the height of the page header. So by default, it's set to 200, but if I wanted it larger or smaller, all of these options are right here. I can choose exactly what I want. Here is the additional information that can be present inside of a page header. So right here, I have title. Here's an option for breadcrumbs, but you can see the eyedrop is unclicked. Same for meta information. So if I wanted to show a breadcrumb, I could click the eye and now it's going to show it right here. It needs to be styled. That's why it's hard to see. We'll do that in a moment. And we also have meta information so I can expand these options right here and I can choose to show all of this information if I had it toggled on. So let's leave that off. And we also have options here for breadcrumbs. So I'm going to toggle that off because I don't want breadcrumbs. Now these styling options to set the background as well as how the fonts look is in this design tab right here. So I can choose the size and color of the font right here. Here's my color. And here is how I can choose the font, the size, etc. And then here is for the breadcrumbs. You notice how it didn't look good on a dark background. This is where I would have made the color white to make it legible on the background. Here was for the breadcrumbs font. Meta colors, that's if I showed the meta information. Now, here is where most people are going to want to have a setting put in place, and that's where the background for the page title. So I can click here and I can choose a color. 
I can choose a gradient or I can choose an image. So I might want a color and I can say link it to one of the colors in the global color palette like this or like that. And it's linked to the global color palette. That's an option. Or I could have chose a gradient right here so I can choose the colors that I want and I can choose the blending. This is your typical gradient or I could choose a image. So I would select an image right here. I can upload one or choose it from the gallery. Here's one that's already uploaded. I'll choose the image and there it is. There's additional options here to make it fit right. And we also have options here on the scroll behavior. So I can have the image stay fixed when I scroll or have it scroll as the visitor scrolls down the page. Another nice feature is you can choose the exact position of the image and how it shows by just clicking right here and choosing the exact part that you want. So I could move the hat off to the side if I want like that. And I think that makes for a very stylish page header, if you ask me. And so we have that set. Now here is an interesting option. You can override the image that's used on a page by page basis with this option here that says used featured image. So if I toggle this on, on and the page has a featured image on it, it will use the featured image in this area right here. Now, in those cases where it's difficult to read the text because of the way it is over the image behind it, there's an option here to put an overlay color. So if I wanted to darken it up a bit, I could choose this dark color right here. And then here's a little slider that sets how see-through it is. So I can start scrolling this down and you see it's now a lot easier to see the text as it's on top of the image. So now when it's set how I like, I can choose publish and then I can X out of this and you can see we now have a page header and this will show on all of the pages on this website. Now the second item was what if on a page I do not want to show the page header on that individual page. Well, it's very simple. Go into edit that page and back here you find all of the specific settings for the page by clicking this icon right here. It says page settings and then right here it says page title and when it's set at default, it's just going to use what we just set inside of the customizer. But if I didn't want it, I can click on disable. I can click on update and now let's take a look at it and you can see it's no longer here. Lastly, we need to cover the WooCommerce shop page. If you notice, I'm on the shop page right now and this is a page that is controlled by WooCommerce and you don't have the typical options here that we would have. So this is set inside of the customizer and we follow the same method that we just followed. So I'll choose customize and in here I'll choose WooCommerce. Next I'll choose product catalog and you can see right here we have the title enabled where it says show archive title and we have all those similar options here of alignment height and exactly the information that appears inside of the page header but let's look at changing the image and the background and the styling so I'll choose the design tab right here we can change our color title and all of that but what what we want to do is change the archive title background. So I'm going to click right here. And in this case, I want to change the image to something else. So I'll click on select image. And why don't we choose this image right here? Actually, this might not be large enough. Instead, let's choose the shoes right here and I'll click on choose image. And you can see we just changed it. Now, like we went through a moment ago, you can choose a different point inside of the image like this. 
this to whatever you want, just like that. And we have different options here to make sure it's fully covered. So this is probably a better option, either auto or cover right here. I think that works good for me. Lastly, I'll click off and let's darken up the image by having a background overlay color. So I'm gonna choose my black and I'll pull this down to say 50% like that. And you can see right here, the opacity level is set to 0.5 and that looks entirely fine for me. I'll go ahead and click on publish. Now there's one more setting that's important to look at as it relates to page headers because it's right underneath the header, how this affects when you enable the transparent header setting. So to enable a transparent header on your website, it's inside of the customizer. So let's go ahead and go back into the customizer. This option is gonna be found underneath header. And then when I scroll all the way down, here's my option for transparent header. So I'll toggle the transparent header on right here and you can see now my header area is completely transparent and we can choose exactly which type of content on our website we don't want a transparent header right here just a side note when we looked at the individual page options there's an option there as well to disable a transparent header on a page by page basis but you can see what ends up happening when we're using page headers like this and then we go and enable them on your website, there's this blending that occurs that you see right here. So keep that in mind when you're setting your page headers for a background color gradient or image. And that's all there is to using page headers with the cadence theme.